Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG HOA Ham. So far in the Shack Build Out series, we've done a brief introduction. We've talked about how to get power and distribute it in the Shack. And then most recently, we talked about that simple subject, grounding and bonding. Today, how many feed lines do we want in the Shack and how are we going to manage them right at the workbench? The first question to be asked is how many feed lines do I want to run? And the answer is simple, more than you think. Unless it's really easy for you to get access to the feed lines and where you would run them, you're going to want to do that when you have a wall open or a chase open. So run a couple of extras for future expansion. Next up, once they break through the wall at your shack, wherever they kind of enter into your shack, how are you going to manage them? And then finally, do you need any coax switches? I'll show you how I set up my shack. And again, this is just an example of how you could do it. Hopefully it'll springboard some ideas for you on what you can do in your shack. We'll save this for the next episode, how to break through the exterior of your home and get those feed lines outside in a distribution box. I'll show you an alternate method that's not quite as invasive nor quite as much fun, but that's not today's topic. That'll be next time. We'll talk about the feed lines and what's happening on the other side of that wall, how I arrange them. And then we'll talk about the MFJ4704 distribution panel. And finally, let's talk about these coax switches right at my hands reach in the shack. You're looking at the finished product here, which we'll cover in a future video, but that is a plain white sheet of polymer that covers my entire chase. Open up that chase and there are eight, yes, count that, eight feed lines. Most of them go to the attic antenna farm, and then two of the lines are available for operating backyard portable. At the bottom of the chase, there are three cables, which are for future expansion. Of course, some of those six coax lines that go up to the attic antenna farm are also future expansion. The three lines on the bottom, I had no idea what I was going to run to them. Two of those are power lines, and one of them is a large control cable line. Each coax line is already attached to the MFJ4704 distribution box inside the shack. That way I know how long I need to cut these cables once I finally get them outside of the house wall. Here I'm taking individual zip ties that have rings on the top of them and screwing them to my studs so I can fasten each cable to the wall in an organized fashion. And here's the job completed. That was fast, wasn't it? Now let's talk about that MFJ4704 coax patch panel. My initial thought was here, I'm a handyman, I can build my own patch panel. By the time I costed out getting some sheet metal and buying all of my connectors and painting it and all the labor involved in that, it was way cheaper just to go out and make the investment in the MFJ4704. I'm a ham radio operator. I'm not afraid to customize things to my particular use case. There's no design flaw with the 4704. There are openings on both sides to put your feed lines into, but because I was coming at this from the back wall, I wanted the back of this unit open. And because the case of this is so solid, I knew I could take the center of this back out and completely open it up so I could get to the case from the back side. And anytime I need to do future work, I just take my chase off the ground garage wall and I can change out feed lines in the future by opening up the back of the coax patch panel. Wear your personal protection equipment when doing work like this. The grinder can be used to take the rough sharp edges off and then fine sand it with your Dremel. Now all that's left to do is reassemble and install. Let's get our modified coax patch panel attached to the wall and then we'll get back to the bench top. And don't worry, we'll get to those color-coded zip ties in a future episode. Now that I have my cables organized through the wall in that MFJ distribution box, I'm going to run them into various switches so that I can take them to different pieces of gear. This switch right here are all of my antenna feed lines. I should say four of them. I have more feed lines than those four. One of those is disconnected currently off of position four, and this is going directly into the attic right now, connected to my chameleon antenna. F-loop 2.0 mag loop, I'm doing some testing with it, a mag loop in the attic. Imagine that, it's working fantastic. But from here, uh, I can switch between all four of those antennas and determine what antenna I want to come into which radio. This switch controls which radio I'm going to operate from. Because I have multiple pieces of gear, I have one of these hooked up to my FT991A permanently, but when I want to work on something on the tabletop, I can switch back and forth between various rigs that are using my various antennas. When I'm on the 991A specifically, 
quickly, I do have one final switch that is strictly used for UHF, VHF antennas in the attic. So I've given myself the ability to control multiple pieces of gear, radios, to multiple antennas. That's what I've done in my shack. There's nothing magical about what I've done here. And you shouldn't use this as a blueprint, step one, step two, step three, and do it exactly as Bob did it, unless you need exactly what Bob needs. This is to give you some ideas to springboard off of so you can customize your shack to exactly what you need for your operating conditions. Hope you found this useful, friend. Talk to you soon. 73.